Yesterday I did a video uh, talking a little bit about Freud, Sigmund Freud, Viennese psycho, uh, the father of psychoanalysis from Vienna. It's also where my dad was from, actually. He's from Vienna. Uh, he was a Holocaust survivor, and he came to the States in 1939. Yeah, 1939. Um, just before, you know, things got really difficult in Europe, uh, for the Jews especially, but for others as well. Um, anyway, um, today we're going to talk about Jung. Jung, Jung was uh, a follower of of a student of Freud, and then he broke with Freud. And, and Jung broke with Freud mainly because uh, he thought Freud was too much uh, looking at things in terms of sexuality. And he also broke with him, and this is from his book, Carl Jung did a book at the end of his life called Memories, Dreams, Reflections. It's a great book. Uh, it's a, his memoir. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, I, I read it I think I read it a couple times. It was so good. I, I, I it, you know, it was the one book that, that like really turned me on to Carl Jung. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a little video going around online of Carl Jung talking, the, the interviewer asks him, um, do you believe in God? And, <laughs> and Carl Jung is like, hard to, hard to answer that. And he's like, I, I don't believe. I know. <laughs> I, I, I just, I paraphrased it. That was not exactly, but, but he's like, I, I know. <laughs> I don't believe, I know. Um, before we talk about, oh, oh, the other thing that Jung um, broke with Freud about was um, he thought that Freud was a little bit too opposed to mysticism and the paranormal. And, and, and Jung was definitely getting into that and exploring that. Um, but anyway, um, I, I, I forgot to mention yesterday that there are some things that, um, some concepts that Freud brought to the world. And remember that Freud was, was writing in German, right? So, so these are, these are terms in English. They weren't, they aren't the exact terms necessarily, you know, obviously, cause it's a different language, but, but these terms all show up in the course. So I'm going to read some of them right now. Uh, anxiety, association and dissociation, defense mechanism, denial and repression, dream of convenience, ego, identification, manifest and, la and latent content, motivation, projection, it's a big one in the course, um, although I, Freud didn't necessarily mean it exactly the same way, um, reaction formation, regression, resistance is a big one. It's a big one in the course. Sublimation, unconscious, wish fulfillment, and the world's dream and the secret dream. These are all things that, 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 that Freud talked about in his, in his work. Anyway, let's read some quotes from Carl Jung. Um, here we go. Your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens, awakes. I think awakens probably better, but your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakes or awakens. All right, I don't think we need to talk about that one. Let's go to the next one. Everything that irritates us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. So anytime you, you, <laughs> there's a great, there's a great little quote, which is, if you spot it, you got it, right? Whatever you see in others that you don't like, it's in you. Otherwise you wouldn't see it. It, it would not even, you would completely overlook it. It would not even be important. But if it irritates you, if it upsets you or bothers you, even in the little, even the least bit, it means it's something, it's somewhere within yourself where you are not at peace, right? So it's, it's really a reflection for you and something for you to do some soul searching or inner searching to, to, to understand what it is that you're bothered about. And it really all goes back to the same thing, but, but you can, you know, you can see that on different levels 
ultimately, you know, the ultimate level is um, you think you're separate from God, right? You, you feel guilty about that and, and you, you are troubled <laughs> in, in suffering because of that. Um, <clears throat> there is no coming to consciousness without pain. Knowing your own darkness is the best, best method for dealing with the darkness of other people. Let's read it again. There is no coming to consciousness without pain. Knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darkness of other people. Okay, so you can't help others until you help yourself, right? Until you see your work through your own issues and then, and then you can really help others. And, and the course brings in the idea of the wounded healer. And it basically says we're all wounded healers here. Um, but, but the, the extent to which we can, we can work through our fear and, and, and see that it's really nothing, then we can really help others, right? So, so often in this world, um, people try to help others, but they, they don't help themselves, right? They're, and they're good about helping others. Why? Because talk is cheap, right? It's easy to, you know, just like what I'm doing right now is, you know, it's easy to talk about this shit, but, but actually putting it into practice and actually living it and, and ultimately embodying it is a whole nother um, order <laughs> of, of things, right? It's a very tall order. Um, <clears throat> and, and so the first part of this, there is no coming to consciousness without pain, means that um, you're gonna struggle with on, on the spiritual journey. If you don't struggle on the spiritual journey, you're not doing it right. right? <laughs> you know, the, it's not gonna be easy. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's been called the razor's edge, pa razor's edge path. It's, it's, um, not for the faint of heart, actually. You know, you really have to. Um, you're you're going to be go go through t trust, tests and trials on your on the way, and it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be painful, a lot, and it and it becomes you know it's you know it's, sometimes things get worse before they get better. So when you start on the spiritual journey, it's not all love and light, right? It, and and um, cherries and roses. It's it's Oftentimes it get your life gets worse because now you're willing to look at it. You're willing to look at the things and not avoid them. And things will come up for you. Things will present themselves to you that will be troubling and difficult and painful. But you have to, you know, you, those who have patience and perseverance, they will, they will get through it and, and things will get better. In all chaos, there is a cosmos. In all disorder, a secret order. Okay. In all chaos, there is a cosmos. In all in all disorder, a secret order. So this is uh, the course keeps telling us there's nothing random in this universe. <laughs> Everything is happening for uh, a purpose, and the purpose is to to bring us home again. And uh, and, and we can't see it from, with our body's eyes, with our physical eyes. We, we will tend to see chaos and disorder and randomness and um, unnecessary suffering. And we'll see unfairness, that the life is unfair. Um, things are happening by chance. Things are happening randomly. Um, there's no one running the show. <laughs> On some level, that might be true. But there, but but it's but love is everywhere, you know. And, and Freud actually said something similar. Uh, there was a quote where he also talked about that, that things are, do not ha happen randomly in the universe. Let's just read that quote from Freud again. Um, um, let's read that. We choose not randomly each other. We meet only those who already exist in our subconscious. That's, so that's not exactly the same thing, but it's very similar. Um, there's an order to everything. We cannot understand the order from where we are, but what we can, all we can do is, is be open to the fact that maybe there is an order. Maybe there is a, a higher plan at work, a divine unfolding, a divine plan. All right, let's go on. 
We cannot change anything until we accept it. Condemnation does not liberate, it oppresses. Right? Non-judgment. Releasing all condemnation. What is the word condemn has the word damn in it, damnation, right? We when we con condemning someone or judging someone is putting them in hell. Right? And and why do we do that? Well, because we're already in hell, right? We we only condemn because we are have already put ourselves there. And that's the only way we would do that, because we feel so bad about that that we need to now project it onto someone else. And so someone else becomes um, the one who's going to take the blame. They become the fall guy. They become the scapegoat. And then I don't have to deal with it, right? If they're, if it's their problem, then I don't have to look at my, that that is there within me as well. <laughs> and I can, I can avoid it again, once again. Um, so we have to, we have to learn to accept what we want to change, we first have to accept it. Then from the acceptance, there might come change. But first we have to be in a place of acceptance. And accepting everything, right? Accepting all of life and not excluding anything from that acceptance. Ex accept and accept, right? There's two words. Accept and accept. There's no exception from your exception <laughs> when an inner situation is not made conscious it appears outside as fate when an inner situation is not made conscious it appears outside as fate this again is the, is talking about there's nothing no coincidences there's nothing random there's no luck or chance it's it's just a matter of of becoming aware of what's going on within yourself. If you become aware with what's going on within yourself, you will see, you will connect the dots. You'll be able to connect all the dots and you will see that the order of things. Otherwise, it'll look random. It'll look coincidental. It'll look like things are happening by chance, by luck, by fate, by death, by, by some, um, you know, chaotic randomness that, you, that, you know, does not make any sense. So, all right, go on, going on. Christianity really arose from the spirit of Gnosticism, <clears throat> but came into conflict with it later because the Gnostics threatened to dissolve Christianity with their philosophical speculations. This is a fascinating one. I'm going to read it one more time. Christianity really arose from the spirit of Gnosticism, but came into conflict with it later because the Gnostics threatened to dissolve Christianity with their philosophical speculations. All right, this is, this is a very important one. And I'm just going to talk about some of the things. What, what were some of the philosophical speculations of the Gnostics? Well, the Gnostics, first of all, um, what is Gnosis? Gnosis is knowledge. And we know that the Course, Course of Miracles, is aiming at knowledge. It's It's saying we, we live in a world of duality, a world of perception, but God, God's reality is, is the realm of knowledge. How do we get to that realm of knowledge? Well, in a way we get it, the realm of knowledge with a capital K, well, how do we get to that capital K knowledge? By the way, the word, word no, K-N-O-W has now in it, right? Also has no in it, but it has now. How do you get to the eternal now? How do you get to that eternal knowing? By knowledge, right? You, you need some wisdom to help you get there. And that's what the Cor A Course in Miracles is presenting, is it's presenting you a guide, a wisdom guide. It's not saying just have faith in Jesus and you will be saved, right? Just believe in Jesus and you will be saved. Um, for some people, that might be that easy, actually, right? That they just because because some people are 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 able to to just have that simple faith, but most people are not. Most people are are more complicated. So we need um, we need a a, a a path of knowledge, right? In India, it's called Jnana Yoga. Jnana Yoga, J N A N A, and that's where the word Gnosis comes from. It comes from the Sanskrit word Jnana. Gnosis, and we get our word no in English from that. So um, <clears throat> the Gnostics 
among other things, two of the things that they said was that God did not create the universe, the physical universe. That was not God's doing. That was some other, not the, not the ultimate God, not the, the absolute God. God did not create the world. Something else did. Right? That's one thing. The other thing that they said was, well, you can't, find, you can't achieve salvation or maybe most people cannot achieve salvation except through knowledge. If you look at the Gospel of Thomas, for example, which is an apocryphal 